My name is JC McCauley. I'm Naisha McCauley, and well, you're, you're watching, watching AccessTV.org. Good morning and welcome to the challenge. Uh, as always, first and foremost, we'd like to thank God for uh, the opportunity and thank you, the viewers, for tuning in. Uh, this uh, year, uh, we want to uh, place a lot of emphasis, if you will, on uh, our environment. So uh, we've asked a friend uh, uh, to come back, uh, someone who uh, has dedicated uh, a lot of his time and uh, his life to uh, looking at how the environment impacts us uh, us all, but even more specifically, uh, the impact that it has on urban areas, the uh, direct correlation between the environment and uh, the kinds of maladies and the kinds of uh, problems and issues that, that we face uh, that uh, impact our health uh, and our well-being. So I want to say thank you first to Dr. Mitchell for uh, consenting to to be a regular guest and uh, hope that uh, uh, we can both uh, uh, own up to that uh, regularity and bring you uh, the, uh, these uh, topics and these issues uh, that surround our environment that help us to all become more aware uh, and, to, and to be more conscious of the kinds of things that uh, are impacting us and our ability to be as constructive and as productive uh, of uh, people as we possibly can. Good morning, Dr. Mitchell. Good morning, Russell. How are you? I'm well. Happy New Year to you. Happy and Year. Uh, it's so it's wonderful to see you. I'm glad that you uh, uh, consented to come back. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, the pleasure is all ours. Uh, I want to pick up kind of where we left off at, if you will. We uh, know that there's a huge lead problem uh, that some have thought went away. Right. Uh, because, you know, we've been talking about lead for uh, many, many years. And then suddenly uh, some would thought would have thought that we combated it and we'd been able to diminish it to some, a certain degree where it wasn't uh, as much of a problem. But you say what to that? Right. So I say that um, that lead is a problem and it continues to be a problem um, because we continue to add lead to products, we continue to add lead to our environment. And we now know that there's no safe level of lead exposure, um, that we have, that there are health effects, uh, neurological effects um, at every level of lead exposure. And even though the effects may be small for an individual, for a group of people like the city of Hartford or, or any, any kind of population, um, it, the small effects to, for individuals are major effects for the population. Mm. Uh, so, for example, let's say that um, lead exposures of 10 reduce your IQ by three points. Wow. Well, but that doesn't sound like a lot. But if you add them all together yes. um, nationally, yeah. then you come up with millions of IQ points that are lost. Mm. It, de it increases the amount of people who are classified as mentally retarded um, by you know, by substantial percentages, like sure. 10, uh, 15, uh, 30 percent, and decreases the amount of people who are classified as geniuses um, by similar amounts. Um, and so it makes a, a, a big difference. Um, and that's just for IQ. Mm. We know that lead not only um, affects IQ, um, but it also uh, contributes to ADHD, um, the attention deficit uh, mm. hyperactivity disorder. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that the children can't learn. Mm. Um, they can't pay attention um, in class. Mm -hmm. And so they will have much greater chances of dropping out of high school and much greater chances of winding up in prison. And the sources of these lead are, are many. I'm, I'm glad you, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you, you, you're reading my mind because that's right. exactly what I'm thinking as you're saying. 
right. uh, what you're saying, but go right ahead. Right. So there are many sources. You know, most uh, most people know about lead in paint. Sure. And that is the largest source of lead um, still. Right. Um, even though lead was taken out of paint um, in the 1980s um, and um, supposedly taken out of paint. Mm-hmm. Uh, people think it was taken out of paint. It was taken out of household paint. Oh, but it's still in industrial paint. Okay. Um, so if you find like a bridge that uh, has um, uh, the, the beams that are painted sure. and you see the, the cracking and peeling paint, yeah, that, yeah. that contains lead. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Um, also in your home, if you have um, um, uh, lead beams in your basement or whatever else, um, those are painted with So we're paint. breathing it. We're breathing it in. And Well, we, we may be breathing it in, um, but it depends on your exposure. There, there, you know, most places since um, they've taken the lead out of gasoline, the amount of lead in air has decreased. Oh, okay. But they still have lead in aviation fuel. Mm. So if you live near an airport, um, you're likely to get higher levels of inhaled lead. Mm-hmm. Um, if you um, live near a lead smelter where they make lead or, or a place where they, um, you know, in the automobiles, we have lead batteries. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they are recycling those batteries or, or building new batteries, um, then you're going to be exposed to lead um, in the air if you live in that neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Um, so there, and there are many products that contain um, lead. I think I told you last time about the um, wheel weights and and yes. um, you know and that that when the that you use for fishing. Uh, well, no wheel or, wheel weights, but uh, it's true the fishing weights also. Okay. Um, but um, on tires to balance the oh, tires. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, you know they put on uh, these weights. Yeah, and they can be right alongside. Yeah, the right other. alongside of the wheels. Yeah. The, the inner, inner inner portion of it. Sure. You'll, you'll see them there. You know, like like this. Yeah. Way. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> they can be made out of lead, or they can be made out of um, other steel or or other metal alloys. They fall off those tires. Right. They fall off those tires, yeah. um, and the cars behind them um, run over the the wheel weights, and they crush them into powder. Um, and then uh, the studies show that 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 when people um, walk in their homes, they track in the lead dust in their homes and their children, um, their babies who are crawling on the floor um, will get the um, lead dust, um, put it in their mouths, and uh, it will contribute to their their lead exposure and their, oh, and wow. their lead poisoning. Wow! Yeah, yeah. Wow! And I, I'm I'm gonna uh, presume that um, that at that point in their development. Is or or is there a point in a, a person's development where the impact of lead is is more severe than others? Because right. it it sounds to me like uh, a lot of us are walking around not knowing how much exposure we've had to lead, right? And and frankly, you know, we don't realize how much we we've been impacted by lead until um, we've talked to a doctor, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's hard to tell how much lead exposure people have had because lead stays in the blood for only maybe a couple of weeks. Um, and then it's deposited into the bones and into the brain. Um, and so, and lead, uh, and during pregnancy, a woman's um, uh, bones uh, will um, start re not regenerate. Well, they will. They sort of regenerate. They mm-hmm. they break down and, and rebuild. Um, and what happens um, when that ha- happens is that that the lead gets back into the blood and is passed across the placenta um, into the uh, the fetus. Um, and you asked about you know when is the time that that's most susceptible uh, when people are more most susceptible. Right. And that is um, during. Um, uh, around the time of birth, uh, the the organ that's growing fastest around the time of birth is the brain, and when you're developing new brain cells, they're much more sensitive to being uh, killed by um, lead. the The body tries to um, incorporate lead instead of um, iron or instead of uh, calcium, and so the brain contains a lot of calcium uh, uh, and. Uh, and and yeah. you know, and when it's developing, it'll take the lead, and the lead will kill the the, the brain cells. That's so very interesting to me. I can't help but wonder, uh, you know, if now, uh, since there's a, a 
a particular, a specific emphasis by yourself, uh, primarily because we've talked about it a number of times, um, to focus on, you know, the the problems with lead and the problems with the environment that um, we're now seeing uh, uh, really in our society. It, it seems like to me uh, the uh, advent of, of a whole lot more mental health issues than we've ever seen in, in any, I think, in any generation, it, right. it would seem. Yeah, yes, that, there, there's a lot. First of all, there's a lot more known about mental health than there has been in the past. For example, on lead, we used to think that lead exposure was only a problem for children up to the age of five um, because you're getting new brain cells up into the age of five um, and then the number of brain cells decreases after the age of five. But it turns out that it's much more complex than that. Um, and um, in fact, they're saying that 90% of what we know about brain science has been developed within the last 15 years. Um, so what happens um, at the age of five is that your brain starts um, calling itself. Uh, I think we talked a little bit about this before. Sure, sure. Um, and, and pruning itself, you know, like a, like a bush or a tree. Right. You know? And what happens when you prune a tree is that the other branches get stronger, um, uh, get more um, of the nutrients. Yeah, get more of the nutrients yeah. there instead of it being spread all around right. and, and right. helter-skelter. Right. Um, so, so what happens with the brain is that you learn habits and that you don't have to relearn them, that they're already there. You don't have to think about them. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to think, oh, I need to put one step in one foot in front of the other so right. that I don't fall down. Sure. Uh, you don't think about that when you yeah. walk yeah. Uh, because it's all already incorporated right. into your brain. Yeah. But, you know, but when you're one years old, you have to think about, you right. know, you see how, yeah, how sure. unsteady they are yeah. when they walk yeah. and because they haven't learned that. So sure. that's what happens when the brain is pruned. There are a lot of things that you do automatically that you used to have to think about. Right. Um, uh, and, and anyway, so, so, so exposure to lead and to other um, toxics um, during uh, it actually affects, it eliminates it, it it limits that development right it limits that development right um, uh, and you know at every age and then of course in adults you know we we have other uh, in in teens you know the uh, uh, it it leads to. Uh, premature um, sexual development in teens, uh, lead exposure does, mm. um, and in adults, you know, their their kidney disease and and other and high 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 blood pressure, you know, in Flint, a lot of the uh, uh, there was one um, one one patient uh, who all of a sudden lost his vision and couldn't figure out why, and it turned out that his blood pressure. Um, was no longer controlled. It was a sky high um, after lead exposure. Um, you know, one of the, the things that lead does is it's, mm. it's a very potent uh, vasoconstrictor. That means that it that it uh, decreases uh, the size of the blood vessels mm. and so increases the blood pressure um, and can lead to things like stroke, um, like heart attacks, um, like kidney failure. Um, so, so those are just some of the things that 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 lead does, but the, the the issue is that there's so much that can be done to prevent it. It's totally preventable. And I'm glad you said that. That's a great segue into our next segment. We're talking to Dr. Mitchell about the impact of the environment on our everyday lives, and uh, we're very very glad that Dr. Mitchell has consented to be a regular guest, so that we're aware of the impact that the environment has. Uh, on us uh, in our uh, lives. We'll be right back.
We are talking this morning with Dr. Mitchell about uh, the impact of lead on uh, our, um, actually our general health and well-being. And uh, quite frankly, I am uh, fascinated uh, because uh, I think Dr. Mitchell, uh, well, I thank Dr. Mitchell for uh, his willingness to share with us and to help create an awareness within our community that would help hopefully help make us uh you know better uh at uh handling uh the kinds of issues that are created by our exposure to lead that frankly a lot of us aren't aware of but uh, uh can uh, can do something about um and we were just about to talk about the things that can be done uh, that would help us to uh, relieve or to address some of the the issues uh, that uh, happen because of this exposure to lead. And so, if you will, uh, you know, tell us because we're uh, on the challenge. We like to talk about solutions to problems, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we want to uh, we want to know that there can be some way of reversing or relieving or in some way combating. Uh, the ill effects that lead has upon uh, us, uh, uh, especially in urban settings uh, in the, uh, the black community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so uh, share with us, you mm -hmm. know, what you will, um, uh, things that can be done. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot that can be done about lead. You know, the um, lead ex Lead is a natural substance, and it's fine in the ground, uh, <laughs> you know, so, right. and it should stay there <laughs> yeah, uh, in exactly. the ground. Yeah. Um, the uses for lead in products um, have been decreasing, but one product at a time. Uh, there needs to be a comprehensive approach to get rid of all lead, um, and there needs to be an approach uh, to not only get rid of new lead sources, um, you know, in products that, that contain lead, you know, we talked about the tire weights, right. um, but things like, you know, hair dyes, right. um, they're, they're, it's just in a lot of, you know, aviation gas, sure. it's just in a lot of different uh, products and it right. doesn't need to be. Mm. Um, so the first thing is to take the, um, you know, take it out of products, take sure. it out of new, new products. Um, the other thing, and is, I'm sure there are ways to do that. There, there are. Uh, there are substitutes for almost every usage that we know of of, yeah. of lead, um, and you know, and there can be research into substitutes for the things where we don't yet know about substitutes for lead, um, like and, car batteries. And 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 the unwillingness to 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 remove it, and I know that there has to be to some degree, and I'm sure it's because of years of using it, and and not necessarily uh, having a, a an agreement on uh, its impact right. or, or, right. or so, realizing so, its impact is part of the reason why it hasn't well, been addressed or and, no. And also there's economics, you know, the, you know, once well, you start, yeah, once I, you start, um, I, investing in um, lead in a product, it's absolutely. much easier to keep it there right. uh, than to try to, uh, do research and, uh, on reformulation and, and so on like that. And so their economic interests, uh, special interests that lobby Congress to, to keep, uh, toxics in, uh, products. For example, uh, the toy industry association and McDonald's were lobbying at the state Capitol in, in Connecticut, uh, to keep different toxics in toys. Uh, uh, you know, and, you know, and, yeah, and unfortunately, you know, we're not there to, uh, you know, to give our perspective. Right, right. Yeah. right. You know, and this year in the state capitol, the, um, a number of urban legislators are on the environment committee uh, and can make a big difference uh, in, um, in our exposure sure. in the cities if they hear from our residents. Yeah. But our community, you know, they don't hear from our community uh, about... Um, uh, you know, why our cancer rates are higher right. due to exposure to the environment, um, why our um, uh, learning disability rates are, are, are higher due to exposure to lead and other uh, toxics like that, and that there really should be um, a concerted effort to remove that. Um, there are economic studies that show that for every dollar that you spend 
to remediate lead paint, for example, or lead, lead exposure from uh, pipes, um, uh, water pipes um, in schools or in mm -hmm. the home, mm -hmm. that you get at least $17 back um, in savings um, over a, a period of 20 years. Um, you know, most of it comes, you know, so you get your money back within seven years right. um, of your expenditure. And the money is saved through um, not having so many uh, children who are special education. Right. Um, so it's, it's through education. It's through health. Um, through. I'm glad you've linked that. I mean, that, the, that, that's, yeah. that needs to, and I'm glad we're talking about it and we're using this platform to talk about that because, right. of, you know, Right. In a capitalistic society, you know, obviously, you know, money seems to be the bottom line. Right. So, you right. know, let's talk about it in terms right. of economics. So yeah. so if we can, you know, reduce uh, lead exposure, we can reduce um, uh, renal dialysis, um, you know, uh, kidney failure. Um, we can reduce strokes. Um, we can reduce heart attacks. We All the things high, that high increase blood pressure. Yeah, health costs. Right. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. As, and so we'll see savings in health costs. Um, but we'll also. So, but everybody's a stakeholder, also in the right, student doc. Right, right, because yeah. um, uh, the issue that is that you know that we said, well, you know, uh, people don't have lead levels above seventy, you know, and that was what was considered safe in the nineteen fifties, and in the nineteen sixties, they thought that lead levels of sixty were safe. Uh, in the nineteen um, right, right. uh, yeah. eighties, thirty-five, and now we know that there's no safe level of lead, yeah. and that any lead exposure, the 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 normal lead exposure is zero. Yeah, and anything above zero will have health effects. Does but you, have but, health effects? But the effects. thing that bothers me is that we don't have to have these kinds of problems. Right, right. I right, mean, we it, don't. that that right. just you and, know and, and, and another, calls me. Um, another thing <laughs> that people don't uh, associate with lead, which is a very costly uh, issue, is um, violence in prisons. Um, if you have lead, higher lead levels, you're much more likely to wind up in prison. Mm. Um, and so, you know, there, there's, there has there's been an association. A, we've done research on that. Yes, there's association between the murder rates um, and lead, um, blood lead levels. Um, when they took lead out of gasoline in the 1980s or 70s, I guess, um, the uh, murder rates declined uh, on a stepwise fashion in the 1980s. Um, uh, that, that is astonishing. Yes, it and is. I'm I, I'm I'm surprised we're not using that research, you know, to to deal with again the you know all of these maladies, you right. know that we right. you know. Well, part of it is that the people said, well, we solved the problem because we thought that if you just had lead levels of less than thirty, then that would be okay, and that there would be no more murders. Yeah. Uh, but it, it there's, right. uh, but we you can see that didn't work. Right. <laughs> yeah, that did not work. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> you know, yeah. but, but there wasn't a lot of publicity about the link, you know, because it took, um, you know, it took about a decade to, to after, it took about two decades after uh, reducing lead sure. to, uh, to verify that research. And then they said, well, we've already solved the lead problem, so um, this research isn't, um, isn't important. Mm. Uh, but we haven't solved the lead problem. Right. And so, so, you know, so, and it also turns out that if you remediate a home, it, um, you know, there, so the, the federal requirements are that when a home is sold or an apartment is sold, that if you've tested for lead, you need to let the new owner um, no, or the new tenant who's moving into the mm -hmm. um, apartment. No, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but if you haven't tested for lead, you don't have to test for lead yeah. and you don't have to tell them uh, uh, anything. So the incentive is to not test for lead. Mm. And so it, the, but it's, but when that happens, people will go in and be um, lead poisoned yeah. um, again and again and again. I'm in, I'm sensing an insurance sensitivity to uh, the the problem that exists because right. it, it would seem to me that there uh, there's pushback from uh, that industry because uh, you know embracing that research would mean that probably there'd be more claims and right. there'd be you yes. know this adverse reaction to our economic right. uh, 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 to our e economies. So right. um, yeah, yeah. The state of Rhode Island tried to sue the paint industry. Um, and they were, um, 
at, at some levels they won, but then they were eventually lost um, right. the case against the, the pain industries uh, for having put lead in and knowing that there were health effects um, when they um, included the lead in the paint. But they said, you know, it's perfectly legal. And it still is perfectly legal for industrial paints. Um, if you have like a metal toy um, that's painted, then then it's likely lead in that um, in that kind of paint. You know, one of these old um, metal toys or in anything that's metal that's painted. Um, it may be legal, but I don't know if I would consider it necessary. Right. It's absolutely <laughs> not necessary. We're talking to Dr. Mitchell this morning about the impact of the environment, specifically lead, on our uh, overall health and general well-being. Uh, we'll be right back. My name is Jay Stan McCauley, and uh, I do business as Light Source Productions. I provide professional services in the area of strategic video communications. Uh, first, what we do is we help you craft your message uh, using what I call the rule of the five W's, who, what, when, where, and why. We do event documentation, uh, content acquisition, full-scale productions, um, editing, and, of course, distribution uh, through our social media television network. And with social media, uh, video is more important now than it has ever been. Uh, whether you're talking big business, small business, nonprofit, church, or just an individual. Uh, let's say you, you know you you plan a, a, you're planning an event, a wedding, whatever the case may be. But but let's say a big event, uh, but no video. And you spent all this time, all these hours, uh, to put this event on, and maybe a hundred, two hundred people attend the event. But more important than that is that thousands could attend by watching it on social media. But of course, you don't think about this until after the event is over. You can't afford not to capture it for social media. And despite what people think, I am affordable. Give me a call. Let's plan your next video project and share it with the world on my social media television network. I promise you that you will have the attention of one person, me. This morning, we're talking to Dr. Mitchell about uh, health disparities. We're talking specifically about lead and its impact upon our our health and uh, really um, he's given us information this morning to me that uh, uh, I hope creates an awareness that uh, we can take uh, with us to uh, and share with others and to uh, sort of take charge of our own, um, our own life. Uh, you know, talk to uh, whomever uh, your legislators and um, even just to your friends and to your loved ones, just about, you know, why uh, are these conditions um, so prevalent nowadays? We are uh, dealing with issues of mental health and, uh, you know, we're, we're facing problems that we've never seen before. And I think there's a reluctance on the part of a lot of folks uh, to accept that, that we've got these kinds of problems and uh, to, to really do what it takes to, to address them. So that to me sounds like on a larger scale that um, there are two things, both uh, from a policy perspective, we need to uh, make sure that, you know, the folks who represent us are doing all they can to, um, you know, to help us, um, you know, to fight these problems that are creating these uh, maladies, but, also, economic justice or, or environmental justice, rather, uh, should be uh, paid more or particular attention to because uh, my sense is that uh, the environment in certain areas <laughs> isn't the same environment in others. Right. And so, and so yeah. they're not, everybody's not dealing with the same specific problems and therefore, um, you know, they get pushed aside. Right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, one of the greatest predictors of where environmental hazards are located is the percentage of people of color um, in that community. 
Um, there's also a relationship with low income people of any race, mm. um, but the relationship between um, people of color is greater than the relationship between um, income, low income. Um, and what does the research say about why that is? Right. Oh, actually, it's pretty interesting. One of the part of the research says that it's because low income whites um, can live in rural areas. Whereas low-income um, blacks no, cannot. Um, cannot, they're excluded from those areas. Mm. Latinos can, uh, you know, in particular, you know, Mexicans live in, in more rural areas. Sure, uh, you know, Puerto Ricans are more urban uh, uh, of, of Latinos. Sure. So, so part of it is that uh, is that, but uh, the other part is the um, the citizen awareness and the political power. Um, you know, that uh, African Americans have less political power and awareness about how we are just being disproportionately uh, exposed mm -hmm. uh, to environmental hazards and how it's uh, increasing. You know, why, you know, why do we have the highest rates of, of um, cancer? Mm -hmm. Why do we have the highest rates of heart disease? Why do we have the highest rates of learning disabilities? Um, it's be uh, partially, at least partially, because we are exposed to hazardous environments that contribute that. We know that uh, people who live next to um, a factory that produces X uh, toxic will have higher rates of the diseases mm. that are caused by that toxic. Mm. Um, yet um, it's still allowed um, because the corporations have the political power yes. uh, to stop that and the people have no idea. The other thing is that sometimes in some communities, um, uh, the political leaders say that any job is a good job, mm. uh, no matter how dangerous, uh, no matter um, how much it affects the, the rest of the community, the health of the rest of the community. Um, there's something now called health in all policies where we're, so, where, where in public health, um, we're supposed to evaluate um, all of our policies um, on the health effects. You know, most people don't think about the health effects when they say, well, you know, let's have a new factory coming in. They don't think, well, what does that factory put into the air? Right. Um, and uh, is it hazardous to the people? Sure. And, you know, and does, for example, a trash incinerator go into a community a uh, trash incinerator that's known to trigger asthma and people who have asthma um, already, um, should it go into a community with the highest rates of asthma in the and states, all, all like Hartford? All manufacturing plants have waste streams. Right. I mean, streams of waste where they, you know, whether it's solid or liquid, you know, that, you know, go into the environment. But, but they don't have to, but it doesn't have to be toxic. Um, uh, in many cases, it doesn't have to, in most cases, there, there's something called green, um, green chemistry. Uh, and Yale and even UConn is doing some in green chemistry where we can... No, recycling learn, is no, taking place? It's no, it's learning how to produce chemicals um, in a way where they take into account the toxicity of the chemicals. And, you know, right, right now, when you create a new chemical, you look at certain chemical properties like the, you know, does it um, make things shiny? Does it, um, uh, does it, is it heat resistant? Right, it's right. Resistant. But they don't look at how toxic the chemical is. They can look and create chemicals that are not toxic and they can do it in ways that are not toxic so that, um, if there's any release, which there shouldn't be because they lose money for everything that's put in the air instead of in their products, right. um, if there's, uh, you know, that, that they should be able to um, recoup that cost and not have exposures uh, to the workers, not have exposures to the community uh, that are toxic mm. um, uh, and not have to pay for all of that uh, protective gear and, and, and stacks and, and so on like that. Right. If, if it's not toxic in the first place, right. you don't have to uh, put invest yeah. in trying to protect yeah. people uh, from those exposures. Right. So, so anyway, so that's, that's some of the things, but I, I wanted to uh, get back to the economics of, of uh, absolutely, if, if, absolutely. If without, yeah, without question. So, so like I said, for every dollar spent um, on remediating a home, it, they, the, the state would recoup at least seventeen dollars um, in um, savings from the health system, from uh, the uh, prison system, uh, and uh, from the education system. Mm. Um, 
And the more you invest, the, the, the more you remediate the home, the more um, money is recouped, the, the, the higher the ratio. Okay. It starts at $17 to one, one to $17. But the savings is in the health cost. Is that, is it it's all in the health, No, it's in the health cost. It's in the prison cost. It's in the education cost. I got you. Because you don't have to have as much special education. Right. You don't have to have as many prisons. Right. You don't have to have, and uh, the, the, the people who are involved uh, can earn a lot more money uh, because, you know, because they have higher IQs uh, um, uh, and can get better sure. jobs and, 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 and be more productive, and be more and be, productive sure. um, over their lifetime. Sure. Um, so, you know, but, uh, but that's just a secondary benefit, you know, if, if from a state pr perspective, right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, obviously, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, you know, some people think just economically for themselves. Oh, yeah. Uh, but uh, true. But obviously, um, you know, and we know that that as the uh, percentage of of um, uh, people of color um, increases, that you know, we're going to need um, people paying into the tax base um, absolutely to, um, to support uh, those of us who are going to be retired um, uh, in the short, in the not too distant future. <laughs> um, so, so we know. So, in the nineteen um, twenties, um, what we did was we decided that everybody should have indoor plumbing, mm -hmm. and so they put in uh, millions and millions of dollars investment in new pipes in the streets, um, in uh, changing all of the housing yeah. to put bathrooms, infrastructure, indoor, yeah, infrastructure, sure. in, yeah, from the eighteen uh, from the eighteen eighties to the nineteen twenties, right. they they did all of that. Then they 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 created new codes saying that any new house will have to have a bathroom. Absolutely, they can do the same thing for lead. Um, they can say we need to change out all of the pipes uh, that that uh, uh, that may contain lead um, in housing by um, uh, by ten years from now, right. um, and you know, and the new uh, and we need to get rid of all of the lead paint uh, in the houses uh, by now. We need to encapsulate them, you know, not just. Um, uh, eliminate the, the lead hazard. We can require all housing to be inspected for lead um, at the time. We can have tax incentives uh, for people to remediate um, themselves, uh, tax credits. Um, we can do uh, things like bonds um, uh, and even Medicaid will now pay for remediation for any child who's been lead poisoned um, in certain states that have requested it. Um, so in Michigan, um, if, uh, if, you, if you have a child whose lead level is greater than five, then Medicaid will pay for removing the paint or, 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 or um, encapsulating the, the, um, uh, the paint on the walls. Um, uh, wow. Yeah. I, I tell you, to me, you know, all of what you've just said should be incorporated in someone's business model. And I don't see any reason why it, it, it couldn't be. Yeah, Wall Street's yeah. very interested in investing yeah. in this stuff, yeah. too, because yeah. it pays. Yeah, yeah. It makes a lot. It makes all the sense in the world. And I think that, you know, really, um, you know, in most cases, you know, businesses are created because there is a need. Right. And, uh, you know, th there's and it'll a, hire a lot of new people to do yeah. these things. And, and, yeah. and these are jobs that there are local jobs, you know, that can be in the cities, you know, uh, city residents that do the remediation of the housing. Um, when you replace the windows, um, if you have single pane windows, they are too old. Um, the windows are most likely to have lead around them, the older windows. So if you replace um, old windows, um, that, that are single pane with double pane, you not only reduce the lead exposure, you also reduce the energy cost um, and, um, uh, and global warming. So they're just, and you hire a lot of people to do that. Uh, wonderful, yeah. wonderful yeah. stuff. Science meets demand. I love it. I also love it when Dr. Mitchell can take the time to come and be a part of the challenge where we talk not just about the problems, but also about the solutions to those problems. Uh, our time, unfortunately, has come and gone all too quickly. Thanks a million for stopping by, Doc. Yes. Come by. We're looking forward to the, our next time. Right. Yes. Yes, yeah, indeed. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Thanks for having me on. Remember, be blessed.
Thank you.